Hi, ladies. Welcome to Beautiful Bible Studies. Um, we are in the middle of our study of the book of Ruth. So this week we are going to be talking about Ruth chapter 3. Um, and I think I have some fun insights to share with you, and I hope that you'll like them as much as I do. Um, but before we get started with that, I wanted to mention just one quick thing, and that is that um, we are going to be doing an Advent study together um, in the month of December. So I just wanted to let you know so you can mark your calendars and look forward to that. I hope you'll spend this um, upcoming Christmas season together with um, all of the ladies inside of Beautiful Bible Studies. Um, so I wanted to start out with a little story today about um, a time when my husband first asked me out um, on, I guess you would say it was a date. <laughs> it was lunch, but um, I was really hesitant about going. I just... I wasn't sure if it was the right thing, but my friend Martha talked me into going. She said, you know, it's just lunch. He's a really nice guy. I really think you should go. And I trusted Martha and her opinion, and I'm so glad that I did because little did I know the Holy Spirit was involved in this whole process. And, um, and he brought us together, and now we're partners for life. And I couldn't, um, I couldn't ask for a better partner. I'm very blessed. Uh, and I'm so glad that my friend Martha saw that um, in this situation and encouraged me when I was unsure. So um, she is an awesome friend, and she kind of reminds me of Naomi in our reading this week, right? So um, this week we get to the wonderful part of Ruth and Naomi's journey when Ruth lays down on the threshing floor with Boaz and um, at his feet. And it's just a, it's a beautiful part of this story. Um, but it begins with Naomi seeing that, you know, Ruth, you need, you need um, someone to care for you. And then giving her this encouragement and these instructions, this is what I think you should do. Go in and lay up Boaz's feet. And, um, and so Naomi sees into sees Ruth's need and sees the future possibilities that God has for her and encourages her to go to go after it. And so that brings me to our first friendship point because we've been looking at the book of Ruth um, through the eyes of friendship and what we can learn um, from Ruth and Naomi and their friendship. Um, so a friend sees your bright future and points you in the right direction. That's what Martha did for me, and that is what Naomi did for Ruth. She saw, um, she had in her sight God's plan, and she pointed Ruth in that um, that direction. So we can do that for each other as friends. When we look at our friends, and um, sometimes we might have like a fleeting thought about a friend. Um, about something that we see in them that that could be God's call in their life or it could be um, a characteristic of God that we see in our friend or it may even be like in my case you know the idea that you know you really should go out with this this man like this I think this is the right thing for you um, if we share that with our friends if we don't stuff it down or ignore it but actually speak it out and share it with them and encourage them we can help them um, narrow in and on God's path for their life. And that is a tremendous blessing. And I think it's our privilege and it's our duty as friends um, and children of God to point each other in the right direction. So that's my first friendship point for today. And the second one is a friend trusts. So Naomi shares with Ruth exactly what to do. And, you know, she, Ruth, comes from another culture, so, you know, I'm guessing this might have sounded a little crazy to her. <laughs> you know, I don't know exactly what they did in Moab, but these, is, these were very specific instructions, and they were very unusual sounding instructions, right? And they were instructions that put Ruth 
in a position that could have been potentially dangerous for her to go out alone um, at night uh, as a woman. And then also to put herself in a position where um, if she was seen, there, there could be some scandalous rumors that would go around about her. So, so she put a lot of trust in her friend Naomi and following her instructions and believing that Naomi truly does have her best interests in mind. So a friend trusts. And I love the way Ruth answered Naomi. She said, I will do whatever you say. Now, I would love to have a friend <laughs> where I trust them so much that I will do whatever they say. I think I have a few friends like that. But, you know, that doesn't come easily. You know, you have to earn that position in somebody's life where they can trust you to the point that they know that you really have their best interests in mind. And I would love to be that kind of friend for someone too. Not because, you know, you want to boss around your friends. That's not the point. The point is that she trusts her. She trusts her with her future um, to... And to completion you know she trusts her enough that she has repeatedly put her very life in Naomi's hands by just following following her and staying by her side I just think that's beautiful so um, in addition to that I wanted today to look at the sort of um, I would say the spiritual metaphor that's going on here it's a beautiful picture so we can take a look at Naomi and she, in this chapter, is, um, is a picture of the Holy Spirit, okay? She is speaking to Ruth, giving her instruction, and pointing her in the right direction, which is what the Holy Spirit does for us, right? The Holy Spirit instructs us. The Holy Spirit guides us. Um, the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and, and moves us along the path that God has chosen for our lives. Um, and Ruth is a picture of the church. Ruth is a friend of God. And that is, um, that is beautiful. I, um, I hope that you are walking out your friendship with God. That is an immense privilege and a blessing. You are a friend of God, and that is a beautiful thing. So Ruth, as a friend of God, she washes herself, she anoints herself with oil, or in some, um, in some versions it says perfume. She lies down at Boaz's feet. Can you guess who Boaz is, um, is metaphorically? He's a picture of Jesus, right? Have you ever looked at it that way? So Ruth, a friend of God, a picture of the church, washes herself, anoints herself with oil, and lies down at the feet of Jesus. Um, lying down at Boaz's feet in that culture was um, kind of like it was an act of submission and love. So it would have said to Boaz that she was submitting to him and that she loved him. Um, and then she covered him, herself with his robe. So um, that meant that she was saying she belonged to him um, and to him alone. So what a beautiful picture, right? So think about that. Have you, as a friend of Jesus, have you um, washed yourself and anointed yourself and laid down at his feet and covered yourself in his robe of righteousness? That is, um, it's just an amazing picture of God's love and of Ruth's love for Boaz. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and then Boaz, as a picture of Jesus, um, he sees her act of submission and love and he blesses her immediately with provision, right? He gives her grain and sustenance for um, herself and for Naomi. And then he immediately begins moving on her behalf to be her redeemer, just like Jesus does for us. When we submit our lives to him, he immediately begins moving in um, an act of redemption, in covering us with his robe of righteousness, in providing for us, and um, bringing us new life. 
which is ultimately what we know will happen for Ruth, right? Um, but we'll get to read a little more about that next week. So, and then, you know, Ruth goes back home to Naomi and tells her all about what happens. And then Naomi says to Ruth, um, tells Ruth she needs to wait on Boaz. Now, I, I just love that part of this chapter because so many times, if you think about Naomi's act um, and uh, how it represents the Holy Spirit, um, it's just so like the Holy Spirit to say, okay, God heard you, you did what you were supposed to do, and now you need to wait. How many times have you heard that in your life? I know for me, um, I've heard that many times, but I want to encourage right now, you right now, if you are in a season of waiting, many times the Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart to wait, and every time he comes through, okay? So um, think back on those times when the Holy Spirit has come through for you, when that waiting has, has come fruitful and what God said to you has come to pass. And remember that um, a season of waiting doesn't mean that God isn't listening. It doesn't mean that God has said no. It's simply that. It's waiting and trusting him, trusting in um, the promise he's spoken to your heart, trusting in his love for, and care for your future and that good plan that he has for you. Um, like we read about in the book of Jeremiah, he has a good plan for us, a plan to prosper us and not to harm us. And we can trust in that. So I just want to encourage those of you who are waiting to remember that God has your best interest at heart and he, he will come through for you. Okay, so that's all I have for chapter three, but I do have a few discussion questions this week. Are you walking as a friend of God? Now, this is kind of a personal question, but if you want to answer it in the comments, I would love to chat with you about it. Or, you know, just reflect on it for yourself and your spirit and ask the Lord, you know, if you're not sure, ask the Lord, am I walking as a friend of God? Have you laid down at his feet? Do you live as if you believe his robe has covered you? And do you trust the voice of the Holy Spirit when you hear him? Okay, those are my questions for you. Um, I love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear any way, any new um, revelation maybe you had as you were reading chapter three this week or any way that the Spirit has spoken to you through Ruth and Naomi's story. Um, share those in the comments below. And until next time, remember, keep in his word and keep growing because the world needs the extraordinary gifts God created in you. Good night.